Our local woodworking club will be making more Adirondacks for an outdoor camp in the Sierra foothills that is dedicated to families affected by childhood cancer. There is a large redwood clubhouse on the campgrounds with a surrounding deck that can use many more chairs. Also needed are double Adirondacks or settees. This video shows how we plan to construct doubles from standard singles like this. I'll pick the copy tool here and bring a copy of the single Adirondack over on the red axis. This is an assembly component so let me just uh, explode that component so we can now make some changes. These, these arms won't be needed and this back rail, support rail here will not extend out to, to support that arm. Now bring it back to the edge of the chair. The next thing is that this front post must change. It needs to be shortened. I'll make it a unique component and then begin to edit it. And this post needs to follow the contour of the lower leg which now we can see in x-ray. And I'll trace over the boundary of that lower leg on the post here. Bring a red edge over and then bring copy that or make a line there, another edge here. So now I've subscribed I've scribed the top edge of that post and to delete it, delete it, the upper portion here, I'll do a right to left select and delete that. I see that there's some extra material here that I'll delete those edges. There's a little cutout in this leg for that front support piece. Now I've got a uh, middle leg that is the right height but it needs to be centered in the double chair so I'm going to shift this these two components over to the center line of the double chair. And that should do it. The center line of the chair will actually be the edge of those little those seat slats. Okay, I think I've got most of the changes done that are required. I'll make a copy of this single, drag it over on the red axis and then flip on the red axis. And I will delete this front rail because I'll extend the existing one over all the way across and we don't need that because we're going to share this front post that's already on the other chair. Okay, I can copy or select this half of the chair and now move it over on the red axis and connect it right there at the middle Uh, 
that looks like it should work fine and I can extend this front bar by selecting the end with all the screw shank holes and bring that over all the way to the other side. Now I'll need to have some additional screws in the middle here. Do that later. Okay. That looks good. Um, however, we've we've got a wide well, all of these seat slats can now be extended as well. And I'll just show how I would do one of these. The, bring it over. And it would also have screws in the middle uh, that I would do later. Now, We've got a wide back here without support. It's uh, it would be very weak, and to fix this, I'll make a a new back support that doesn't even exist on the single chair, and that back support will also be five and a quarter inch wide. We're using standard five and a half inch lumber for this redwood. Uh, so I can bring that up on the blue axis and then come right over to the, fa the back face of the back slats and then come down to where I started that's the shape, but I've got a little, yeah, I'll make that a component, calling that the back support. Let's do some editing on this piece. I'd rather like to have this extend right up into the corner there and come right down on the same angle. So that looks good. We've got a shape that's a face with no thickness yet. It's in the center of the double. Um, and it needs to be had get some width. So with the push pull tool, I can come right out to the face of the lower leg on that side and the, bring the face over that way. There is an issue here with this back support here that is protruding into the support that we just made so it needs to be trimmed. I'll just go ahead and put in some edges here at the intersection and then bring a copy out to, to shorten that on the green axis. Edit the component. There you can see the line that I drew. And we can just use the push-pull tool to shorten that. I could have done that in, in, in situ. I didn't bring, need to bring that copy out. I may want to move that shank hole, screw shank hole over a little bit, but that can be done later. So, looks like we've got a double with nice support for the back, although I don't like that protruding corner in the back. 
So we'll just go ahead and chamfer that out of there. And I'm going to need some screws from those lower legs into that back support. So there's a few more cleanup things to do, but we've got a good start on the design for the for the double.